And we have 23.4 ocean floor sediments. Our two objectives describe three sources of ocean sediments and explain why studying ocean sediment is important. We have three vocabulary terms on the three different types of sediments. And the key ideas, the sediments covering the ocean floor have different origins and textures and vary by location. Ocean floor sediments provide useful information about past changes in the ocean and in global climate change. Now sediments cover the deep ocean floor. Some come from turbidity currents or fall down from above. For example, a melting iceberg may contain sediments that settle to the sea floor. Now some sea floor sediments originated in outer space. They result from space particles that are constantly bombarding Earth's surface. Most space particles are very small and burn completely in the atmosphere. Now some larger ones melt materials on Earth's surface upon impact. These particles are the source of what are, what are called splash form tektites and microtektites that can be found both on land and on the sea floor. Now there are four main classes of ocean floor sediments. They vary in size and composition. We have sand, large granules, muds, and clays. Now ocean floor sediments vary in composition. Scientists classify each sediment based on where it originated. Now oozes and sediments made from microscopic shells. Oozes are sediments made from microscopic shells. And terrigenous sediments come from continental rocks and minerals. Biogenous sediments come from the skeletons and shells of marine animals and decomposed marine plants. Now certain microscopic marine organisms, such as diatoms and radiolarians, form shells composed of, composed of silica dioxide. Now the remains of the mo these abundant marine organisms precipitate into the ocean floor as silica silicous ooze, which then forms the sedimentary rock known as chert. Now this process is similar to the one by which calcareous oozes lithify to form chalk. Now both chert and chalk are often found with marine limestone deposits. Chert was an important raw material for prehistoric humans. Its fine texture allowed it to be chipped to form sharp tooth tools, um, sharp edged tools and weapons. Now hydrogenous sediments form min from minerals that are crystallized from seawater. Now we have something called a manganese nodule. Now this is a type of hydrogenous sediment that was actually very, very important in, and it still is important in supporting the idea of there was once a, sea, a, a shallow sea on the surface of Mars. Because guess what? We found these manganese nodules on the surface of Mars. And their nickname, their nickname is blueberries. So if you ever do research, they might be called blueberries as well. Now exploring the deep sea can be very expensive and dangerous, but the unique organisms, magnetic records, and industrial resources available on the ocean floor are very, very significant. Now they often hide portion of Earth's hydrosphere, biosphere, and geosphere, and as one of the least explored domains of our planet, there are many scientific discoveries waiting to be made still about the deep ocean floor. Overall, in Chapter 23, we started studying the ocean floor, echo sounding, sediment sampling, satellite observations, and mapping the floor. Then we walked through the continental margin, the parts of the continental margin, active versus passive, and talked about submarine canyons and turbidity currents. Now the ocean basin, abyssal plain, abyssal hills, deep sea trench, deep ocean vents, mid-ocean ridges, seamounts and guyouts, corals and coral atolls, or in the section three. And then finally, we have origins of ocean floor sediments and the importance of sediments. That's it for chapter three, and 